Hey everyone, so I am redoing my June wrap-up, my reading wrap-up. I had got some things mixed up and it was just kind of long. So, here is what I read in June. So we're going to start off with the graphic novels and manga. So I had read volume two of Sailor Moon, the Eternal Edition. This is the one with uh, Sailor Mercury on the cover. And this is the one where we learn a little bit more about the Moon Kingdom and their past lives and a little more backstory on some of the characters, um, some of the villains and other things. I have not watched all of Crystal, which was the newer anime, but I do remember in the original, we didn't learn all that, so the manga is slightly different. A, a lot of it's the same, but there's a little bit more to it, and I love Sailor Moon, so I will definitely be continuing I read Curse of the Crystal Cavern, which is book two, I believe. Yeah, book two in the Pathfinders Society. This one was okay. I feel like I need to take more time with these books. As of right now, they're just not capturing me the way that I feel they should. And, you know, that there's a lot of characters there. And I'll continue with the series. And maybe it was just that particular book that didn't catch me uh, the way I would have liked it to. Because, you know, the synopsis of the series sounds interesting. It did have some fun moments. I read in Lumber Jane's Volume 2. Uh, this one has some mentions of, or slight mentions of, figures of Greek mythology. And much like the first book, it's just super fun. I still like these characters and their personalities. It, it's just fun and adventurous. I will definitely definitely be continuing this series. In fact, I think I got a couple more books from the library. I read Peter and Ernesto, which is like a middle grade graphic novel. Um, it's about these two slaws. One is kind of afraid of everything and the other one wants to see the whole sky like he wants to go on an adventure and so he does and his friend ends up missing him and going to look for him and you know discovering his own bravery it's really cute i read cat wad you're making me six which is the sixth book in the cat wad series uh this one kind of reminds me of like older like Nickelodeon cartoons. It's it, it's kind of gross for my taste, but it's also kind of silly. So, I, I like the silly cartoonish parts about it, but I could have do done without the gross parts. I read Fish Girl, which is by the same person. I believe her name is Donna Jo Napoli who wrote a book called Serena that I read a few years ago and I really liked. Um, that one was also about a mermaid. So Fish Girl is a graphic novel that is about a mermaid, basically, or Fish Girl, as she's called, who lives in this tank. I think it's in a museum, if I remember. And it's controlled by this man who claims to be uh, Neptune, you know, the god of the sea. And basically, he wants her to show just enough of herself where people don't know 
that she's actually a mermaid. It's kind of like a mysterious thing. And they keep coming and bringing money to try and see the mermaid. And, you know, obviously this guy is basically exploiting this girl. And she ends up meeting this one girl who comes to see her and stuff happens. I thought it was really well done. The problem I have with graphic novels and stuff, especially ones like that, is they just feel incomplete. Like, especially ones that aren't, like, series. The story just kind of ends. But I did enjoy the artwork because it was beautifully done. And the story was really good. I read the first volume of the Tea Dragon Society, and it is so adorable. The story, the drawings, it's about this girl, if I remember, she's a goblin or part goblin, and she ends up returning this tea dragon to its owner, and she starts learning about tea dragons, which are dragons that grow tea leaves on their horns or their antlers, so there's like... Um, I think maybe Earl Grey and Ginseng, um, can't think of the other ones, but they're all different types of tea. I think there might be like a chamomile and stuff like that, that they're all different kinds of teas that these dragons grow. And it's just so adorable. I definitely recommend it to anyone that likes Things that are whimsical and cute and um, lighthearted and dragons and tea. I believe that's it for um, graphic novels. So moving on to longer or non-graphic novels. Some of them actually are kind of long. I read The Scorch Trials, which is the second book in the Maze Runner uh, series. This is where they are out of the maze and, you know, going through more stuff. Um, more secrets, betrayal, all that good stuff. I thought it was an okay sequel. I don't remember as much as I did from some other sequels, but it was entertaining. Um, I know people are going to maybe dislike this opinion, but I had read, I think it might have been for the Jurassic park thought that I picked this one. I read Bridge of Terabithia, and I think this was for, like, the prompt about friendship. And while it was a good story... And I understand it's like a middle grade story. I, it just felt like there could have been more to it. Because I've read some middle grade books that have some pretty good backstory. Have like a lot of depth to them. And I'm not saying this is like a terrible book. I've never seen the movie. Um, every time people bring up the movie, it, it always looks sad. I just... For this book, it just felt like we didn't get to know the characters that well for me to be maybe as sad or emotionally invested as I've been for some other books. Because there are some, like I said, middle grade books that just will tear you apart, like... Um, the Miraculous Journey of Edward Tulane, or The Shape of Thunder. Um, I, I think some people group The Giver as middle grade, and that one's really deep too. Um, but I just, yeah, I'm not saying it wasn't sad, because it definitely was. I just feel that we didn't get to know, or at least I felt I didn't get to know the characters well enough. It was just too short of a book. But it wasn't horrible. It, it was a good book. I, what else did I read? I read Ignited Melodies. 
by Lily. I'm sorry, I got that backwards. Emberly Lily Summers. So she is on YouTube, and I believe their current name now is The Writing Sisters. They have really good content. And I was sent this a copy of this book through um, a Kofi commission. And I'm so glad that I was able to get this because her poetry is just beautiful and so well written. I love how she just weaves together elements of fantasy and everyday human emotions, really. They kind of are mixed, um, you know, metaphorically. Um, sometimes some of them are just straight out like fantasy type poetry, which is fun too, but there's a lot of um, fantasy metaphor in talking about human emotions. Um, things that I picked up on were, you know, maybe self-doubt and fighting through that and just a whole bunch of other stuff that's so relatable. It was really well done and she picked really good cover art and pictures to go with it too. So if you're looking for something um, indie and poetry, I would definitely recommend Ignited Memories, or sorry, Ignited Melodies. Uh, so I did miss a graphic novel, Marceline the Pirate Queen, which is an Adventure Time graphic novel. This is where Marceline and Bimo go to retrieve something of bubblegum of Princess Bubblegums from pirates. It's really funny and I, I just love BMO in this one. And I'm just loving Adventure Time more and more. I'm not really sure why Jake and Finn were on the cover because they're not on the book. Like I don't think there's a mention of them like at all. So I'm not really sure I know they're like the main characters and everything, but still, I'm not really sure why they were on the cover because they're not in the story. But anyways, it's a short read, good pacing, I like the ending, it, I like some of the silly and sometimes slightly dark humor, which often comes with Adventure Time. Yeah, this one was a really fun read. And then finally, I reread The Tale of Despero. I would say uh, Kate DiCamillo has the potential to become one of my top favorite authors. But The Tale of Despero just kind of seemed all over the place. It was a cute story in some places and kind of even deep in others. But like I said, it just kind of felt all over the place. And if you don't know what The Tale of Despero is about, it is about this mouse that is born with unusually large ears and he doesn't quite act like a mouse. He, you know, doesn't scurry. He just loves stories and, you know, has a big imagination and, you know, he just doesn't know how to act like a mouse, basically. And the idea of Despero is cute and everything. And it's worth the read. I just, it's not one of my favorites from this author. But still, I'd say pick it up. So that is my June wrap up. Thanks for watching, every, thanks for watching everybody. Uh, see you next time. Bye.